everyone. Okay, so as um, I was just introduced, I'm head of strategy and investments at choice.com. We used to go by the name of Cryptarium. Maybe that's a, a company name that you might know a little bit better. Um, we're a crypto banking application with about 750,000 users. We've done a billion dollars in transactions, and we also do quite a wonderful B2B service, white label service, if anybody wants to talk to us. But that's not why I'm here today. So bridging CFI, DeFi, highest APY. It's mumbo jumbo, really. I know there's some of you in the, the audience who understands all these acronyms and and what's the difference between CFI and DeFi? And the guys on the stage just now, Cal and Brian, they're very smart guys. They understand the future of what's going to be happening. But for the average person, that means absolutely nothing. And I want to give a, a little example about how we're sort of wrapped up in our own terminology. And is it CFI? Is it DeFi? But the average person just doesn't care and just doesn't know. So a few weeks ago, I got a spam call. We all get spam calls. This one was from Zurich, so I thought, OK, I'll answer this call. This might be interesting. And it was the BlockFi police, apparently, the blockchain police. And they were calling me because there were some suspicious activities on my blockchain. So I said to the guy, which blockchain? And he spoke in a very clever Swiss accent, and he says, the blockchain, sir. So that's the level that we're dealing with. These scammers are not stupid. They understand that the average person on the street doesn't understand anything about blockchain, doesn't understand anything about crypto. And yet we keep talking about CFI, DeFi, APYs. OK. Unfortunately, the presentation on the screen is not the right presentation, but I will talk about what was supposed to be up on, on, on the screen. The speed of adoption of crypto is at some speed. I mean, we're going at maybe um, the same speed as internet adoption. The current position, after the amount of time that we've had since the start of the internet compared to crypto, roughly the same speed. We've got about 300 million users. And all those 300 million users, do you think they understand what CFI and DeFi is? No, they don't. They haven't really got much idea at all. So why are people investing in CFI and DeFi and crypto in general? There are a lot of surveys, a huge number of surveys. And the simple answer is, people want to make money. The people on the stage just now were saying, you know, I want to make money. Greed is good. I want to make money. So most people who have invested in cryptocurrency have not done it because they want to make a payment for their insurance. Now, maybe we all believe that one day stable coins will replace fiat currency and we're all spending crypto like there's, you know, there's no longer fiat. But most people today are not actually owning crypto for that purpose. Most people just want to make money. And there are some fantastic opportunities to make money in both CFI and DeFi. Now, the CFI space, as the colleagues before me have all said, have made a few mistakes. I mean, we've had the big fallout of Celsius, et cetera, where they just took your money and did what the hell they like with it. But nevertheless, there are still some very good companies out there who are doing some really nice things with, with your money and making good returns. In the DeFi space, there are even more exciting projects out there. There's some really high-earning um, opportunities. If you know how to access them, and you know what you're doing. But the problem is, most people don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what a cross-chain bridge is. They don't understand the terminology, a farming pool, crypto mining, hash rate mining. What is all of this mumbo jumbo? And yet here I am talking about bringing together CFI and DeFi to improve higher earnings. But it doesn't have to be like that. We've all probably spent some time now in the crypto industry. And we know what it was like back in 2016, 2015. You couldn't buy crypto on, the, you know, on a normal application. You might be paying 20%. You didn't actually have any way of spending it. When we launched as Cryptarium in 2017, 
We did it under the basis of, wouldn't it be great if you could actually spend crypto in a real-world environment? And now, anyone can do that. It's not that complicated anymore. There are loads of apps out there that have crypto payment cards. You've changed it, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And there are loads of applications out there that can do all of those things for you. When we launched the first ever payment card, people were actually taking videos of them sticking a payment card into an ATM, and then that ATM, out pop money, wow, look at this, put it on YouTube, I use crypto. Now Visa and MasterCard fall over themselves to get new crypto companies. Everybody's announcing a new relationship with one or the other every single day. So we know we can simplify things. Now, if there are 300 million crypto users in the world, and most of them, most of the surveys, for example, show that two-thirds of people say the primary reason is to make money, 200 million of them say, I want to make money. And yet it's estimated only 4 million people have actually accessed DeFi. So we've got a conference here talking about DeFi, but on a global level, only 4 million people have actually accessed this service. And there was a question from the last panel. People put their hands up. Very few people actually put their hands up about DeFi. So the technology behind the scenes is for clever people. It's not for the person on the street. They do not care. They really do not care. So on the one hand, you've got CFI. That's the top box up there. On the other hand, you've got DeFi. You've got cross-chain bridges, wallets. And on the third hand, you've got the customer who, I really don't care. I really don't care what the hell you're talking about. Give me a good interest rate in a safe environment, in a simple-to-use system, and I will do that. Now, customers are not idiots. It's just that they haven't spent multiple hours like us trying to work out how to use all of these systems. They understand a savings account. They understand that if I put money into a savings account, it gets locked up for a certain period of time and I'll get an interest rate. They also understand loans. They understand the basic principles of banks. We need to simplify everything to that level. We shouldn't spend years trying to educate the, com the, the, the population about the wonders of DeFi, the wonders of CeFi. Just bring it down to a level that people understand and communicate with them at that level. A quick analogy, if you don't mind. So I am not an electrician. I do not understand the electricity systems. But I understand when I switch a light switch, electricity comes on. I know that there is a national grid. The national grid is a bit like the blockchain. Things flow through it. And I understand on this national grid, I can choose an electricity supplier. And that electricity supplier will have different customer ratings, different fees, different lock-in terms, and I will choose that particular electricity supplier. But then, when I click the switch on the wall, I don't choose what the hell goes on after that. That's all done by somebody else. That's the level we need to be getting to as an industry, not the type of conversations which are really for this room. That's fine, but once we go outside this room, we have to bring it down to a level everybody understands. Now, the best way to do that, in our opinion, is to give people choice, hence the reason why Crypterium changed its name from Crypterium to Choice. People should have a choice as to what they are doing, but they don't need to know what the heck goes on behind the scenes. You give them the same type of information. How big is it, that, how big is the company that you're going to be investing in? We've assessed you, what type of risk profile do you have? How long do you have to lock up your money? How much money do you want to lock up? and use it in language that they understand, and then we do everything else. They don't need to know that we've moved it from this chain to this chain, we've wrapped one token, we've used a cross-chain bridge, we've done some hash rate mining or whatever it is, as long as we give the customer the basic information. So if we want DeFi and CeFi, going back to the original question, to be answering, bringing them together as that solution, we should be answering, customers don't care. Just give them a solution that gives them access to a decent earning environment. We have spent a lot of time over the last 12 months using the banking application that we've already built for cryptocurrency that is now regularly used by, as I said, about 750,000 people. And we've put inside an earnings application. 
where the customer can go inside and say, I can now buy crypto, I can spend crypto, and whilst it's sitting there, I can earn crypto, and I don't need to know anything else about what's going on. That's the way the industry has to go. And they need to be doing it now. I've got a simple quotation on the board here. The best chance to deploy capital is when things are down. We've been down now for the last 12 months. What have companies been doing for the last 12 months? They have to be building this type of capability. So when there is the next upturn, customers, every customer, not just these super clever crypto ninjas out there, can take advantage of this. They are getting into the crypto. Nobody's using the earning functions, except for large institutions and very clever individuals. We've got to give everybody the same access. We talk about um, stable coins, how you can earn 10% on the stable coin. Yeah, great. But you need to be able to do it in a language that they understand. That's what we've been doing for the last 12 months. And that's what I think the industry needs to be doing. So going back to that very first question, which I will flick back through some slides here. CFI, DeFi, will it bring the highest APY? Customer doesn't care, guys, really doesn't care. Just make sure that you do it in such a way that the customer understands, he knows what he's getting into, and it's very, very simple for everybody to use in the same way. I understand to flick a light switch. That's the level we need to get to for our customers. Okay, probably I didn't answer the question that you thought I might going to put up on the, on the board today, but I want to get it down to a, a level where if we want to go beyond these conferences and everybody is doing this, we have to talk their language. Thank you very much.